After months of global grain shortage, negotiators in Turkey say that they have reached a deal to resume grain exports from Ukraine. After hours of negotiation in Istanbul, Turkey's defense minister announced Ukraine and Russia had agreed to allow grain shipments through the Black Sea. Turkey and the United Nations helped broker that deal, expected to be signed next week. The deal would end a months-long impasse that has left more than 20 million tons of much-needed grain stuck in Ukrainian ports, unable to leave because of fighting in the country. Now, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says that more work was still needed to finalize the deal, but hailed the breakthrough as a critical step forward. In a world darkened by global crisis, today at last we have a ray of hope. A ray of hope to ease human suffering and alleviate hunger around the world. A ray of hope to support developing countries and the most vulnerable people. A ray of hope to bring a measure of much needed stability to the global food system. And DW's Nick Connolly joins us now from Kiev. Uh, Nick, um, tell us. Just a few days ago, the Ukrainian leadership said that it did not trust Russia. With that in mind, what should we make of this breakthrough? Well, exactly. That is the crucial issue. That trust is not there. We've seen time and time again uh, deals to evacuate civilians, other deals uh, between the sides to talking about uh, prisons of war and of uh, the kind of the, the bodies of, of casualties of war. All those deals have fallen through time and time again. So the question about whether Ukraine and Russia can work together now, lots of question marks there, lots of doubts. I think this is definitely about the blame game. Uh, both sides in this conflict know that this is an issue that has caught the attention of people around the world, that people are really feeling the impact of this conflict in their daily shopping, in their in, in their, their food bill. And so they're all trying to play a game. They're all showing willingness to engage. But whether Ukraine really is willing to take those mines away to basically make cities like Odessa and Mykolaiv vulnerable to Russian attacks from the sea, to let those uh, commercial uh, grain ships through. I think there are lots and lots of doubts still whether that's actually going to happen. They're talking about some kind of coordination centre in Turkey that would uh, manage shipping through the Black Sea. But the people here on the ground, analysts are saying that even if there were that willingness to remove the mines, that still could take months because lots of those mines were laid in a hurry in the first few days and weeks of this war. So even, even if, despite all the odds, that kind of trust is somehow found, the realisation might take a lot longer than lots of people around the world are hoping. Remind us what's at stake here when it comes to grain shipment for Ukraine. Well, obviously, this is a huge industry. Lots of farmers here are basically sitting on huge harvests that the world desperately needs, but they can't get them out, can't get paid for them. Um, and you know, moving forward to the next few harvests, without that ready cash coming in, how are they going to pay their wages? How are they going to pay for fuel and fertilizer? But it's also about the bigger point of Ukraine's access to the world oceans, other industries like um, metals. They're being able to get their exports out. The land borders are just a lot more uh, expensive in terms of the logistics. They're further away. They're less well organized. So that's the bigger picture for Ukraine. But actually, I think in all of this, in terms of the food, this is more a problem for the outside world than for Ukraine. Because paradoxically, as long as those ports stay closed, food is actually going to get cheaper here in Ukraine for Ukrainian customers. It's the people in places like Lebanon, Mauritania, um, often very far away, who are incredibly dependent on Ukraine, not only for grain, but also for vegetable, real basics that are just exploding in price right now. Okay, so so many knock-on effects um, for the global community. DW's Nick Connolly for us there in the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. Thank you so much.